that. <clears throat> the same thing, you know, the fact that I get to, you know, work with somebody like Billy Idol, who all of our songs are pretty different. We don't just stick to one thing. And because uh, we grew up kind of with the Beatles, and the Beatles records, every song was different. And they took you on a little bit of a journey. So I, I just have, as a guitar player, all these styles that I've studied and, and loved, you know, a bit of classical, uh, flamenco, and, and stuff. Um, I was, I'm able to express myself with a singer who's open to that stuff. So I mentioned to somebody, I went, you know, started lessons when I was pretty young, and a lot of teachers were really like old funny duddies. They, they didn't even want to like teach you like Beatles songs, you know? I don't know what the fuck they want to teach me, but I didn't want to learn the songs that my parents were listening to, but, you know? And I went away to, hey, can we shut up back there? <laughs> Pipe down a little bit here. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it. Um, so, um, I didn't mean to be rude like that. <laughs> Throw me off. <laughs> I'm actually a nice guy. <laughs> That's very unlike me. My cousin will vouch. I'm a good guy. Um, so Flamenco, I went away to a summer camp out in uh, Hempstead, Long Island, called Used There, and the guitar teacher was a flamenco guitarist, and he had escaped from, he was Romanian gypsy, escaped in the Second World War with nothing but his, his flamenco guitar. And I didn't know what it was called or anything. He played this style. But this guy had such a passion about what he was doing. And I said, I want to learn what that is. And then I went to high school with um, a guitar player. Uh, there was a, uh, a dance company, a flamenco dance company called the Jose Greco dance company had dancers and guitarists and the guitarist in that was Mario Escudero and when I went to high school his son Mario Jr. was uh, in my class and was a flamenco guitar player as well. So I went to the high school performing arts on 46th Street but I'm a dropout <laughs> and I got accepted in that playing Mood for a Day by Steve Howe. And Steve, to this day, is my biggest influence. Um, he was the perfect example of somebody who, in the format of a rock band, was playing Chet Atkins and Segovia and crazy jazz stuff and psychedelic guitar and yes was the most adventurous music I had ever heard and, and uh, I didn't know what it was they were doing but it seemed to me to be really really amazingly interesting so I was a Steve Howe nut, learned how to play mode mood for day got accepted in the high school performing arts playing that uh, but then they let me know that um, the guitar was not a member of a symph symphony orchestra, so I had to take up another instrument, and uh, I'm the shittiest viola player that <laughs> you could imagine. <laughs> and so I lost interest. The big messed up, the big buck up that they had was that you had your music classes in the morning, which I loved, because they had music history, music theory, uh, and I loved hearing about the composers and how, you, you know, we think of classical music as this kind of stuffy thing, but actually, those guys were the, they were absolute rock stars and lived crazy lives. And so I loved my music classes. Then they had a lunch break, and I'm on 46th Street, and on 48th Street is the music studios. And we're talking, we're talking like 1976 when it's all happening, you know, and there's We Buy and Manny's and all that. So I'd leave on my lunch break and I never went back, you know. And, and I became friends with some of the guys in the music stores and they'd let me play all these, you know, you'd have like 59 Les Pauls hanging in the window, you know, they were like under $1,000 and I could play them. And, um, so... You know, uh, that's why I, I ended up getting a GED, but, and then I joined my cover band, as I mentioned, to do all of that. Um, so, yeah, all of those early progressive rock guys, uh, Robert Fripp, and it, what's amazing now is I, we did a, a, a last European tour with Billy Idol. Um, Robert Fripp's wife was our opening act, and I got to hang out with Robert, and it's been absolutely 
There's very few of my musical heroes that I've met that I became that were a disappointment. And I'm always there's a couple. <laughs> Just because you're a good musician doesn't mean you're not an asshole. <laughs> And it's, it's heartbreaking because you'd meet somebody and they would mean everything to you and you studied every note and, this, and then they're kind of like, yeah, they, they could care less. I've always been really careful when I meet other musicians and, or anybody really because you know, this happens to be my job. I'm no better than the, the bus driver or anybody like that because if you don't live a full life and if you don't, if you don't live a, it's true. If you don't live a real life and interact with people, what have you got to, to write about? You know, that's that's what happens. You know, with some some musicians, you know, they struggle their whole life and they and they come out with that initial great record, which is all about their life there, and then the, they become rich and famous. Well, not so much now, but used to be. And they'd lock themselves away in a castle somewhere with a, you know, a chauffeur and a butler and all this. And what do they have? They have no life experience anymore. And their records end up suffering. So I will say with, with Idol and me, I mean, that's the one thing about punk rockers. They don't believe their whole, their whole thing was that they're not better than the audience. And they, a lot of them were limited musically but it showed people that they could do it too. And a lot of, a lot of like Billy Morrison, our, our, our second guitar player in the band, he grew up going to see Billy in Generation X and it inspired him. Wow. He could do that too. And look, now he's in the band with the guy. And, and that's the whole thing is, is like, don't, you know, be cool to people that enjoy your music and, and live a full life, you know, with life experiences. So you got new, new information coming in, so. Um, that's my, my spiel about that. Okay.